This is a poem for Trish Hopkinson. Thank you, Trish. The Atlantic Ocean is called L'Ocean Atlantique in French. My grandfather calls it the Big Drink, or the Pond. Mr. Jensen calls it the Big Blue. Joe, the poet, calls it the Antique Ocean, like it is older than other oceans, like it is put on dusty shelves of an antique shop or a thrift store, passed over, unappreciated by those who are looking for mountains or rivers until a keen eye of a specialty collector spots it and really understands its true value. Whales call it... But the birds disagree, calling it... My cat has never left the house, so she is unaware of the ocean's existence. I am certain that she would probably call it meow. Other animals, like the manatee seal or sea lion, call it some version of birth death place. My uncle in Florida calls it the house. I am not sure if this is because the ocean deals hurricanes with which the residents of his state gamble and the house always wins, or because my uncle, in fits of delusion and drunkenness, has run into the Atlantic, mistaking it for his home. Mrs. Frederick calls it the mouth that swallowed her ancestors, there in the hypotenuse of the cruel triangle. Donald doesn't call it anything because he can't talk yet. Mrs. Reynolds doesn't call it anything because she has stopped talking. Mr. Johns down the street doesn't call it anything either because he grew up landlocked and never left home. Sometimes he calls it the Pacific. I once made that problem myself. People would look at me funny when I get my oceans mixed up. These were mostly people who grew up next to one ocean or the other. These people who couldn't tell the ochres from the Wasatch. So what do they know? I know a fisherman who calls it his graveyard. The ocean itself doesn't call itself anything. If you held a gun to the ocean's head and demanded it to say its name, it would respond as it would any question, with a long, pulsating static, reminding us of our own mortality, the inexplicable static, the indecipherable meaninglessness, yet to persistent pulsating, the persistent waking in the morning, the persistent job and bank account, after which we would put down the gun, acknowledging the absurdity of threatening the ocean, as though our bombs, plastic, and oil spills haven't threatened it enough. And we would leave the ocean in search of the desert for something hot and dry, something even more meaningless that we could hold ourselves up against in comparison to feel better about our trivialities. The desert is good for that sometimes. The ocean is a desert in its own way, in that it experiences very little dryness. As much as I wish this were an original thought, that the ocean is a desert. It is actually a lyric by the band America. I blame the Atlantic Ocean for my lack of originality, for which I think it is only fair. The desert shares equal responsibility. The Atlantic Ocean hears all of this, all of the commotion about its name, about its reputation, about its belly full of souls. We call out for it. We yell its name in our sleep. We dream it, and it doesn't respond. It just continues to lie there, to be blue to rise slightly, to give moisture to the sky, to pose for wedding photos, to cut against the blade of our boats, to heal in our wake. So there you go. Thank you, Trish, uh, for your generosity while I was down there in Provo. Uh, that is a poem about the Atlantic Ocean. Because sometimes when uh, it's just good to like write those types of things. Anyway, take care.